In this video, we'll take a look at how to model, analyze, and design a wood truss in Risa 3D. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the global settings here. And when we open the global settings, we can select codes. This is where we can choose what wood code uh, we're going to use for the project. So in this case, I'm going to use the most recent uh, AWC NDS 2018 code. Now we can adjust other codes, but in this case, uh, we're only worried about the wood codes. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. The next thing I want to do is I'm on the data entry tab, I'm going to go ahead and select to open the materials uh, spreadsheet. And then clicking on the wood tab, we can see the various materials that are available to us for use. Now obviously there's some standard solid sawn lumber and glue lamb materials, um, but in this case we're going to go ahead and choose to use this Doug Fir uh, number one grade material here. Now before we start modeling, I'm going to go ahead and set up some section sets. Now section sets make it possible and help us to group similar members together for analysis and design. So I'm going to go ahead and select the wood tab and I'm going to go ahead and rename this first section set cord. So I want this to be my cord member. I'm going to go ahead and click on the three dots here to open up the entire uh, dialog for modification. And I'm going to choose uh, two by eight and then I'm going to make it two piles. So basically we want a doubled two by eight as our cord members for both the top and the bottom cord. Now we can go ahead and make other changes or choose other databases if we want, but in this case I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Now we want this shape to be type beam and that's fine. We can choose a design list, so I could either set up a design list here or choose available shapes um, to add from the, to the current list, so only choosing you know, a certain number of shapes rather than the entirety of the database. In this case though I'm just going to go ahead to the drop down and I'm just going to choose the rectangular double design list. Now the material and the design rule can stay the same, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter in the spreadsheet and I'm going to go ahead and add our web label or web member. So in this case I can choose the shape again. I'm going to go ahead and choose a 2x6 this time, still doubled, uh, double 2x6 and I'll click OK. I want the type to be vertical brace so it's not a beam anymore, it's a vertical or, or diagonal member. And I'm going to use the design list rectangular double again. Now with the section sets defined, we can start modeling the truss. Now there are two ways to model the truss. We could either model it from scratch just by inputting members ourselves, or we could use the templates. And so we're going to go ahead and model uh, the truss in both ways in this instance. So before I do that, I want to go ahead and click on the drawing tools tab, and we can see the varying drawing tools that we have here. In this case, I've set up a, a display grid here, which we have set up with 30 uh, grid points at a one foot increment. We also have some of our snaps enabled, so I'm going to use this third point snap as we go ahead and draw the truss. And so if I go back to the Home tab, I can go ahead and click on Members. And I'm going to go ahead and draw with the section set, the first section set being the cord. So I'm going to go ahead and draw from the zero point all the way to the 30 foot point. Next I'm going to draw the top cord members again from the zero point, finding the 15 foot horizontal and 12 foot vertical point. And then I'm going to complete the top cord just by clicking on the bottom most right point. Now that I have this defined, I can go ahead and switch my section set because I want to start modeling the web members. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and model the web members at five foot increments along the truss. So I'm going to start the five foot point and then I'm going to get this snap point for the third point. Again, model to 10 feet and then vertically again to the next third point. And then finally to the midpoint of the bottom cord up to the top of the truss. Now I could very easily continue modeling this particular uh, truss, but in this case I want to utilize some of the modification tools. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Modify tab, and I'm going to use the Mirror tool. So if I go ahead and select my members that I want to modify, and go ahead and click on Mirror, I can set the plane. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and set a YZ plane, which gives me an X location. So the location of the mirroring is going to be this 15 foot point. So we can choose that 15 foot point. And then we can go ahead and apply to selected, apply to the selected members. So when we do that, we get the rest of the truss here. So that's really just a quick and easy way to model this particular truss from scratch. Now, if we wanted to model this truss using the templates, we could go back to the Home tab and choose Templates. And you can see all the various templates that we have built into Risa 3D. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose the template for truss. So this brings us into the truss template dialog. And we can first choose our truss type. So we're going to make this uh, just a Pratt A truss. That's fine. We'll choose a material. Obviously, we want to choose wood. 
Um, next, we get to decide the number of panels, and we're going to match this truss that we drew uh, from by hand here. So I'm going to choose three panels, both left and right, and then I'm going to choose the distance here. So all of our distances are going to be five feet. So I'm just going to go ahead and just use some spreadsheet operations to get me five foot panels. Next, we need to define the height. So that height was 12 feet. Then we can choose if we have any kind of rises here. We also need to choose an origin point. So that origin point is just going to be 0, 15, 0. Next, we need to go ahead and define our section sets and rotations. For the top cord, we're going to use cords. So we don't have to change those drop downs. But for the verticals and diagonals, I'm going to switch those to the web members. Probably the most important part of this input is changing the way that the cord unbraced lengths are used. And so we can go ahead and input top and bottom unbraced lengths for bending in and out of plane and for top and bottom bending as well. And so we're going to go ahead and set these uh, as we need to. So the first here is I'm going to use the command segment. So segment breaks up the cord uh, at every intersection of a web member. And so for in and, plane, in and out of plane, or excuse me, for in plane bending at both the top and the bottom because of the web members, this segment command is what we want. Now for out of plane, we want things a little differently. So for out of plane bending at the top, we're going to imagine that we have purlins on this roof. And so maybe our, our purlins are spaced at five feet on center. So I'm going to go ahead and use that five foot. At the bottom of the truss, let's imagine that we have a plywood kind of a ceiling or, or bottom to the truss. And that's we're going to make that a zero dimension there. Now for the out of plane, um, for the bending at the top, uh, as well, we're going to go ahead and set a five foot dimension here to match our out of plane bending at the top. And we're going to use segment again here to match our top uh, bending that we use for in plane. Now, finally, for the bottom bending, we're going to go ahead and set this to segment as well. And then again, match this to the out of plane bending for the bottom of the truss at a dimension of zero. So that gives us all of our cord unbraced lengths that we need. The next is our few truss options. Obviously, in this case, we're going to choose a center line to center line dimensioning. We're also going to choose to automatically pin the web segments. And then we can choose some other kind of basic information, number of copies, and then have the spacing of the copies if you wanted to make multiple trusses at the same time. In this case, we're just going to make one. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. So when we click OK, we're going to get this new window. And this new window will show us that truss. Now that we have both trusses drawn, I'm going to close out of this second view. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this uh, truss that we drew manually and just use the truss that we created using the template. And so before we can add any loads and run any analysis, we need to add boundary conditions. So I'm going to choose to add first a pin boundary condition on the leftmost node here. So I'm going to click to apply and then select the node that I want. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and add a second boundary condition, in this case, a roller boundary condition on the right hand side, again, clicking to apply to the node that I want. Now with our boundary conditions applied, we can go ahead and create basic load cases. So I'm going to open up the basic load cases. And really, we're just going to create a few simple basic load cases, the first being a dead load. So we'll to create dead, we'll put it in the category dead. And then we want to assign gravity with this. So I'm going to make a negative one in my gravity for in the y direction. And then I'm going to go ahead and assign a snow load in this case. We'll make it our category snow load. And then we don't need to assign anything in the gravity case. So now with our basic load cases established, we can go ahead and actually start creating loads. So the first load I'm going to add is, let's draw a line load. And when we draw the line load, the, the properties panel changes to the definition of our line load. We can then go ahead and set our magnitudes. So we'll say a start magnitude of negative 150 pounds a linear foot. And then the same thing for the end magnitude. And then we can go ahead and click to apply. So we're going to want to apply this on the top cords and then the bottom cord as well. So now that we have that applied, we can go ahead and add maybe say a snow load. So we can change the snow load to, let's say, be uh, 250 pounds a linear foot. And instead of being in the direction Y, let's go ahead and make it in the local Y direction. And so when we go ahead and click to apply, we can see that that load gets applied kind of in the local direction of this or the local coordinate system of that Y dimension or that Y axis of that member. Now we can also go ahead and make changes. So in the 3D view, if I switch back to our dead load here, 
I could go ahead and select our dead loads. So let's say, let's select the bottom core dead loads. So let's select these two. And we can go ahead and make that change. So let's say maybe it's not gonna be 150 pounds a linear foot there. Maybe it's just gonna be something much smaller. Let's say 25 pounds a linear foot. And we'll make this other one as well, 25 pounds a linear foot. And so we just have a much smaller dead load there. Now, the ability to visually change and switch to these loads in between these windows makes this application or this modification very simple. After we've created our applied loads, we can go create our load combinations. So if I click on the load combinations button, we don't have a load combination available to us, so I can click in the data entry and then we can go ahead and create our own manual load combination. Now we're just gonna create one simple load combination, just a dead plus snow, but we could also use the load combination generator if we wanted to. So first I need to assign a basic load case. So the first I'm gonna choose is this basic load case one, which is dead, and we'll give it a factor one. And then the snow load is the second basic load case, the only other basic load case we have, and so we'll give it a factor of one as well. Now I can go ahead with this done and solve the current load combination. With the solution complete, we're automatically presented with the, the node reaction spreadsheet. We're gonna close out of that and close out of the load combination spreadsheet as well. And we can go ahead and start looking at some results. So I'm gonna turn off the visibility of the loads. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, select to view our member forces. So let's say our strong axis moment here. So we can see we have our strong axis moment available to us. We can also see the magnitudes of the max and mins in the strong axis moment along the individual members. Now we could change back and forth if we had additional load combinations for visibility purposes, but we don't in this case. I can also go ahead and view the deflected shape. So let's turn on the deflected shape here for that same dead plus snow load case or combination. So we can see our deflected shape with our undeflected shape in the background as well. Now if we wanna go ahead and look at design results, we can choose the design results spreadsheet. We'll get the unity checks for the wood members, both for the cord members and the web members. Now we didn't do any optimization, we didn't do any kind of design, and so we're just giving our unity checks, and so in this case we have our unity checks, some of them are failing, but we would go ahead and do the suggested design to get the, the changes needed to get some passing unity checks. But we can see exactly why these are failing or why they're not failing by going ahead and clicking on uh, the results tab while clicking on the member and clicking on the detailed report. So with the detail report open, we can see all the input data, the material properties, the shape properties. We can also see if our shape is pinned and all the forces that go into this particular shape. In this case, we're looking at a web member which has a lot of axial stress in it. And then we can go ahead and see the limit states. So we don't have a lot of bending, but we do have some um, bending and axial compression here. And so we can see kind of piece by piece, uh, the entirety of the formula filled in with the equations rendered exactly how this check is being accomplished and exactly how Risa 3D is arriving at a specific Unity check in this case. For more information about Risa 3D, visit risa.com.